Today we're going to tear down an LG linear compressor, a year and a half old. What we have here is a compressor out of an LG refrigerator. This is a linear compressor. And we will chop it up, see what's inside of it. Show you. I thought this was kind of neat. Most of them don't have all these springs on it. Let's try to keep them from shooting across the room. Alright, so I'm about halfway through here. I took the back piece off. This is the back. We'll go through that in a little more detail, a little while. It's not really a whole lot to it, but this is why I stopped is because this part is where all your compression takes place. And when I took this off here, you'll see these are metal shavings. That's probably from me cutting through it with a reciprocating saw, just some kind of leftover junk got into it but if you look in here you'll see all these little blackish kind of crumbs I'm not sure exactly what they are but it looks like something either disintegrated burned up had some excessive vibration wear something was going on in here to cause all of that that does not look right to me you get on the back side or what I'm calling the back side Trying to get this out is feels like there's a big spring or magnet that's holding this piece here in. Let's see if I can get well, I can get it to snap back in place. This piece in the middle just pushes up and sits flush here when it's back together. Now this next part feels like this is all just gonna come apart in probably 12, 15, 13, 15 pieces. These just pull out. So I got the back of it off, got all of these, they're metallic, they stick to a magnet, they're not magnetic on their own. And here's what I would call our stator. Comes right out, it's just a big metal shaft as you would expect. And get it back in there, flip it over, and I think this is what was causing that problem. I don't know what that's supposed to look like. But I would bet a hundred dollars that it's not supposed to look like that. It's kind of jagged. It's not clean. It looks like it was worn down. But then again, I'm just not sure what it's supposed to look like. That goes against this piece here. It doesn't turn very well. So I don't believe it was made to turn. I think this was just part of a seal. That on the business end of it. Again, let's see compression. Mystical device that we'll call it at this point in time. And again, just disassembling. There's nothing in here that feels like it's going to move or do anything special, but I did notice there's a couple of retaining clips on here. I'm going to try to get those out and dig further into this. Got the retaining ring out and what it looks like is it's just in there to hold that second set right around here in place. That's all I can think that that's for. This doesn't come out as you can see. I beat on it with a hammer just to make sure and whack that in the process. So that's really all there is to it. goes on the outside of here. This is magnetic. That part sits there. All oh, that's back end. This is the middle. There's the front. That's where your high gas comes out. Loops in there just to keep the pipe from breaking under normal vibrations. would be what I call a stator. You may be mistaken in using that term for it, but it's your typical three pin compressor plug. And you'll notice that only two of them are used. That's just the way that these are. 
you know, cap the windings on the inside. They're a little bit bigger than I thought I thought they were going to be. Well, actually, a lot bigger than I thought they were going to be. Let me bust that open. Just take a better look at it. And here are our motor windings. They're pretty thick. Went ahead and peeled some off just for fun. Just wrapped like any motor winding. Here it is, mostly reassembled. And I've just got a screwdriver jammed in there. I'm going to move the back of it so you can see how the piston part operates. It's just up and down, back and forth, whatever you want to call it. And it resets to about right there, but I can move it backwards even further than that. I think that's probably about a normal stroke. Right up in there, maybe a little bit further. And it's just got two sets of springs down at the bottom. One of it pushes one way, the other one pushes the other way. So that's what returns it back into this little kind of happy resting area right here. This top of the part, <coughs> this part at the top, sorry, is the valve. So this sucks gas back through the bottom. There's a little hole right there. You can see it in the earlier parts of the video. And it's right through here. this plastic but you can see there's three holes down in, underneath it so the gas comes out of here this closes it compresses it and then it comes back out through this part which has got like a dampening action here I don't know if that moves with the piston if the piston overextends and actually goes into that part or not um, it really doesn't seem like it wants to come too far. I mean, I'm putting a lot of force on it to get it just that little bit above the flush position. Here it is from another angle. And this is the part that I was pushing on. Make it go up, and then that's the part to make it go back. And that's the part where our gas goes into it. I'm really not sure what it does is this one here. I'm thinking it's a lubrication port because there's a little channel that goes down into the sides here and then out this other side there's two little ports inside of the chamber. So I'm thinking that's what it's for. I just I don't really know. If anybody does feel free to comment on this and let me know but I hope you guys learned something from this video thought it was a pretty cool glimpse into a linear compressor.